Well, hi there. This is a mantis shrimp. And the mantis shrimp might be the coolest crustacean on the planet. And this is still possibly true if you recognize that hexapods, including insects, belong in the crustacea. And the mantis shrimp, which isn't actually a shrimp, is actually named after an insect, and one of the coolest insects, the praying mantis. And the reason for this, despite the fact that it's not a praying mantis, is fairly obvious. Look at those forelimbs. At first glance, they look very much like the raptorial forelimbs of the praying mantis. Though they're on upside down and are used in a way that is somehow even more terrifying. Though I'd rather be eaten by a mantis shrimp than a praying mantis. I've given it some real thought and uh, I would not like to be eaten by a praying mantis at all. The point is, you are alive when they start to eat you. Heck, you might be alive when they're almost done eating you. Probably not true if you're the prey of the mantis shrimp. The odds are pretty good that you would never even know that you were around a mantis shrimp. And... You'd be dead before you even realized you had an accident. Because mantis shrimp are not so much about grabbing as they are about spearing or smashing their prey, depending on the species you encountered. If you were to be speared, you might have a few moments to recognize the mantis shrimp as your assassin as you sit double impaled on its barbed spear-like forelimbs. But if you were to be hit with the hammer claws of a smasher, you'd never know what hit you. The claws accelerate at over 10,000 times the acceleration of gravity. 102 meters per second per second. That's 335 feet per second per second. The acceleration is so rapid that it creates a vapor-filled bubble called a cavitation bubble. When these cavitation bubbles collapse, they generate a massive shockwave and temperatures sometimes in excess of 5,000 Kelvin. That's the temperature of the surface of the sun. Cavitation bubbles alone are used by pistol shrimp to stun and kill their prey. The reality is that even if the hammers miss you, the imploding cavitation bubble, that alone might do you in. It's one of the most formidable weapons in the animal kingdom and it might not even be the most amazing tool in their arsenal because they have the most complex eyes ever known to exist anywhere on this planet. For comparison, you have four types of photoreceptors in your eyes. Three cones, short wavelength, which is blue, medium, which is green, and long, red. And then you've got rods. Mantis shrimp, on the other hand, have 12 to 16. They see all of the colors that you see, at least potentially, as well as ultraviolet and everything in between. Heck, some of them have up to six different photoreceptors just for UV light that you can't see at all. They also see polarized light. They see everything, though they can specialize their vision down to just the colors that matter in their environment. Each of their compound eyes is located on highly mobile stalks. They see in nearly every direction at once. This is simply one of the most formidable predators on the planet. Thank goodness they're small. Big enough to hurt you, but not big enough to hunt you. The ocean is scary enough as it is. But the question on all of our minds is, is the mantis shrimp a good pet? And is it the best pet arthropod for you? To figure this out, we have come to one of my favorite places on Earth, the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium in Draper, Utah, because they keep one of these amazing cavitation bubble karate chopping vision champions. And we need to give it a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Mantis shrimp are often called thumb splitters. Try to guess why. When it comes to handleability, we give the mantis shrimp a score of one out of five. It's really not that difficult to catch one in a net, as long as it's the right kind of net but I wouldn't recommend trying to hold one. I've seen people do it. Uh, I've, I've also seen people with a lot of stitches in their hands. But to talk a little more about how to handle these animals and to learn how to care for them, we're gonna talk to our friend Katya, who 
cares for this beautiful zebra mantis shrimp here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium. I am so excited <laughs> to get to learn more about these. Thank you so much for being here with us. Of course. These animals are very aggressive and they definitely need to be handled with a lot of care. Um, you need to be very mindful and very careful of where your hands are at all times when you're working in your mantis shrimp habitat. So if you are thinking of getting one, make sure that you know, again, these animals are aggressive and they will attack. How much damage um, can they do? So it depends, again, on the species, but it's been documented that sometimes with the punch is so powerful that they have cut people like down to the bone. We don't know exactly how much damage this one could do, and I hope I never have to find out. That's what Will is um, here for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the main thing. They are aggressive and they do need specific care. Just keep that in mind before you commit to a mantis shrimp. Another thing is some species of mantis shrimp can live over 15 years. It's been documented that some have lived that long. So if you are thinking of getting one, again, apart from the aggress aggression side of it, um, it's also a long time commitment. 15 years of a razor-fisted mini Mike Tyson might yep. be a bit much <laughs> for some people. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Today's video is sponsored by Ridge, and you might already know the Ridge wallet. In fact, you might already have one, or your dad might already have one, but you might still be looking for a good Father's Day present for dad. Well, good news, Ridge now has rings to match his wallet and to solve all the biggest problems that at least someone like me would run into with a nice wedding ring. I've got a few problems that I could potentially run into. One of them is I live a pretty active lifestyle. I could damage the ring. I could lose the ring. Well, great news for those active dads out there, which is that Ridge has some rings made in some really cutting edge durable materials like carbon fiber, titanium, gold, tungsten, my personal choice. And every single ring, not only is it durable, but it also comes with a double banded silicone matching ring that you can wear when you're doing something that's maybe a little bit too dangerous. But should you break it or lose it or should you say outgrow it, dad, or, or uh, maybe drop back to your fighting weight and need a ring that's a different size, well, normally you'd be out of luck, but not today because Ridge is willing to replace that ring for you two times if it's broken, lost, or if you want it in a different size because uh, things have changed. This is truly a Father's Day gift that will last a lifetime. So if you're interested in getting a Ridge wallet or any other of the awesome Ridge products or the new Ridge rings, be sure to check out our link down in the description. And if you wanna save a little money on that Father's Day gift, check out our link down in the description, ridge.com slash Clint. That's ridge.com slash Clint. Oh, and just in case you're afraid that you get the wrong one or dad doesn't like it, he can test drive it for 99 days and return it for a full refund. Probably won't though. What is it like caring for mantis shrimp? It's always interesting. They are very complex creatures. They need very specific care. So it's definitely not just for just anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and there's always something going on. So yeah, and they're beautiful animals. So it's definitely great. When it comes to that complex care, this is obviously a saltwater animal. Yes. So you've got all of the normal stuff that you need to deal with when you're making a, a saltwater enclosure. You can you can watch our video from the past on uh, black tipped reef sharks or epaulette sharks in order to get kind of a feel for what a lot of the basics are of saltwater care. But on top of that, this is a saltwater crustacean. Yes. And there are some things about cr crustaceans specifically that are, are unique even beyond what you would need to keep a saltwater fish. Yes, So, definitely. So what are some of the specific care requirements of you know, crustaceans in general or especially the mantis shrimp? Yeah, so for invertebrates in general, you need to be really careful about your water quality. You're just performing water quality tests every week. Like we do is a very important part of 
Invertebrate care in general, with a crustacean, an invertebrate this big, it becomes even more important. So that's a big aspect of what we do to care for her, just make sure that all the water par parameters are good and we keep them in check. Apart from that, it's just giving her a varied diet. They can eat all sorts of live foods, including crabs, shrimp, fish, um, but they can also be trained to eat all sorts of frozen foods. Mm -hmm. So what we do here is we try and give the shrimp this varied diet as much, we try and vary it as much as we can, and she gets fed all types of krill, all sorts of things. When it comes to those water parameters, I know copper can be a big deal for yeah. invertebrates. Mm -hmm. um, what other water parameters are you watching most carefully? So one big one is the phosphate. Phosphate levels can be very, if they're too high, it can be very detrimental to your invertebrates. So in this case, we use a reactor with something that's called a GFO, which is some type of media that you use in your reactor to pull out those phosphates from the water if you have a high level of phosphate. In this case, there's one reactor that's going on um, that's attached to this tank to make sure that we, again, we keep those phosphate parameters in check along with all the other stuff that you would normally worry about in a saltwater system. Carnivores often are kind of messy eaters and Definitely. then nitrogenous waste can really skyrocket. Is that the case with these as well? Yeah, yeah, for sure. She'll eat, like I said, only carnivorous foods will get all sorts of just meaty things that like you said will get the water dirty so I try and do a little even if it's a small water change after each feed it's really helpful to keep those nitrogen levels down those waste levels I should say so yeah basically that's the big thing that we do is after every feed we do a small water change and just the big water change weekly that again, you would do with a normal saltwater system. That makes a lot of sense. There's a big question I have. I know the way that they hunt. You know, they, they, yes. they essentially double punch food mm -hmm. and they punch really, really hard. Sometimes I've heard about them cracking glass, maybe yes. shattering glass, which is a problem when you keep something in a glass habitat. Definitely. What, what do you do about that? So the main thing there is, like you said, they are powerful enough. Their punch is powerful enough that they can shatter glass. It's been definitely documented before. So the main thing, the easiest solution for that is just to keep the mantis shrimp in an acrylic mm. exhibit. We don't want any accidents or any cracks on this exhibit because first of all it would dry out and they she kind of needs the water <laughs> so yeah the easiest solution for that is just to make sure that you keep it in an acrylic exhibit instead of a glass one that makes a lot of sense how big do you think would be required by um the minimum requirements range from 30 gallons to 50 gallons okay. um per animal and it just varies with the size of the animal and again that size varies with the species of mantis shrimp. There's many species of mantis shrimp and they range in sizes um, from really small to this one right here. She's really chunky. With that, it the different species also have different age ranges too. Typically a zebra mantis shrimp would live about 10 years. This one right here is older than eight. She's almost nine, but she's still in perfect health. Typically you do 30 to 50 gallons as minimum, and you want to keep those animals um, mostly by themselves because like you said before, with their powerful punch, they can use that to attack and hunt prey. So if you are thinking of adding small fish or snails to your exhibit um, with a mantis shrimp in there, they'll probably end up being becoming a snack. So um, you want to have at least 30 to 50 gallons for just the mantis shrimp. And, and obviously the larger the tank, the slower changes occur in terms of yes. your, your water quality. So definitely the smaller you go, the more work you're, you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's yeah. a trade off there. Yep. Another consideration that I forgot to mention before you commit to a mantis shrimp is that your exhibit needs to have plenty of sand and rocks at all times. And just remember it, they burrow. Um, you can see here it has a nice tunnel. They will make tunnels and burrows out of any substrate that you add to your habitat and it doesn't matter how you arrange it the mantis shrimp will rearrange it for you so if you want a neat clean um, exhibit 
maybe the mantis shrimp is not a good idea for you. <laughs> Interior decorator and boxing champion. Yep. I like it. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. Of course. I really appreciate your time. Of course. And this is an awesome, awesome thank job you. you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katya. So with all that in mind, we're gonna give the mantis shrimp a score of three out of five for care. If you want more information about how to set up and maintain a saltwater aquarium, I would point you to our video on cuttlefish. And unlike cuttlefish, use acrylic instead of glass, especially if your mantis shrimp is a smasher. Though I do want to mention that it was brought up by somebody who actually encouraged me to do this video, that this may be a misconception. So I've been looking into it and I certainly find a lot of sources that say that they can break glass. And I have actually been able to find video evidence that they can definitely break glass. My big question is how much glass, how thick of glass could a mantis shrimp break? And this would be an interesting thing to test. I would be surprised if a mantis shrimp couldn't break, say a five and a half or a 10 gallon aquarium. Those, those aquaria have relatively thin glass because five and a half to 10 gallons of water doesn't exert that much pressure on the glass. However, if you've got a much larger tank, that glass is gonna be very thick. Even if you're not using acrylic, it's gonna be very thick glass comparatively. I would be a bit surprised if a mantis shrimp, no bigger than they are, could break it. But if you wanna be on the safe side, again, I would recommend using acrylic. When it comes to hardiness, we give the mantis shrimp a score of five out of five. This is of course, assuming that you set it up in a properly cycled and heated habitat, perform the proper water maintenance and feed it the right foods. So you need to know how to run a saltwater aquarium for large invertebrates. They won't do well if you don't give them this, just like a bearded dragon will not do well if you keep it in a bowl of water. But the reality is that for most saltwater fish keepers, Mantis shrimp are weeds. They often come in on live rock, often very small, make a little burrow somewhere and start remodeling your tank and eating your animals. It's easier to find info on getting rid of unwanted mantis shrimp than it is to find info on keeping them deliberately. And the thing about weeds is that weeds tend to be hardy. For a marine crustacean, I don't think there is much that is hardier than a mantis shrimp. But like always, watch out for copper. When it comes to availability, we give the mantis shrimp a score of three out of five. A wide variety of mantis shrimp species are readily available online. I wouldn't be shocked at all to see one at a saltwater aquarium pet store or a marine expo, though they probably aren't at most pet shops as most don't have a diverse marine selection. The reality is that as long as they're legal where you are, you can probably find one. And consult your local saltwater fish keepers to see if anyone has an unwanted weed growing in their tank that they'd like to see someone come in and remove. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the mantis shrimp a score of three out of five. You can actually get a mantis shrimp for very reasonable prices. Even large and glorious mantis shrimp, like this zebra mantis shrimp or the peacock mantis shrimp, do not cost all that much at all. Many species will cost more to ship than they do to buy. The tank that you will need should probably be acrylic, especially if you get a large smasher. And while it will be easier to maintain if the tank is larger, it doesn't need to be massive. And there are awesome self-contained acrylic saltwater setups available for not at all unreasonable prices. We'll have links to some down in the description. There has never been an easier time to get into saltwater fish keeping. You'll need salt, testing supplies, water conditioner, substrate into which it can dig, live rock, just normal saltwater fish stuff. But you don't need to be a Bond villain to afford a mantis shrimp. A motivated graduate student could do it. Look at me, I'm a grad student. I'm 30 years old and I made $600 last year. Bummer, don't make fun of grad students. They just made a terrible life choice. <laughs> it's so true. And this is why overall we give the mantis shrimp a score of 3.0 out of five, which is a pretty darn good score for a saltwater creature that can split open your hand and break your fingers with its reverse mantis lightning hammer claws. If what you want is one of the most hardcore creatures in an ocean full of hardcore creatures, but you're on a budget, the mantis shrimp might be the best pet arthropod for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. And don't forget to visit the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium very soon, because it's awesome. I should probably pause for a second because we have done 
a number of videos now here at the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium. It's one of my favorite places in the world. And every time I appear in front of this amazing, incredible reef habitat, people just assume it's a green screen, at least until I do something like this and the fish get startled and dart out of the way. But this is real. It's just so amazing that it looks like it can't possibly be. If you've never been here to the Loveland Living Planet Aquarium, you have got to come visit. Uh, it's just such a special place. This, I mean, right back through there, if you look really hard, you can see a tunnel where you can walk through. You can see w what I think is the most aesthetically pleasing of all sharks, the black tip grief sharks. There's wobegongs. There's various different species of sharks and rays, a few guitar fish, sea turtles. This is an amazing amazing, amazing thing to see. And it's not even my favorite thing here by far. So if you've never been here, it's totally worth a visit. But it's real and it's spectacular. Not a green screen. <laughs> and we didn't even pay you to say that. Yeah. <laughs>